Welcome to Not Factory Approved, the eclectic site where I show you uh, many different types of projects and hopefully you can learn by some of my ideas and ways of doing things and if not I hope that you come up with your own ways. You look at the ways I'm doing things and say there's a better way and if so my aim has also been accomplished. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> So the first problem I see is that the vent up top is too close to the back of the cupboard so that this does not actually drop into place. So I'm going to have to cut some of this panel out. This is a used cupboard, used cabinet, so uh, that pre-existing hole is probably a little too low. We'll see. The other problem being that five inches does not fit up there. Four inches does. So I might have to change the ducting or I have to cut out some of the ceiling. Discretion being the better part of valor, decided that the stove, which has a ceramic top, i.e. glass, does not react well to tools dropping. And since I've been known to drop tools, I've moved it. Not often that smart. So I've marked the two inches that I have to cut up and I think what I'm going to do is use that existing hole just go up a little bit higher and that will put it out on the deck uh, unfortunately lower than I would like but um, after discussions we've decided that that's okay because the fan is not likely to be in use when people are outside. So the adapter goes 3 by 10 rectangle to 5 inches and then I'm going to use a 5 inch elbow. Hopefully that will all fit. And so the lip on the bottom there is 2 inches so I have made this 2 inches above the surface, the top surface of the microwave and that should drop into place in theory. I have the Craftsman jigsaw. I'm finding uh, it very difficult to find blades that fit it properly. So what I found is that Milwaukee blades have a proper recess. Craftsman uses a screw to lock the blade in place and a pin to hold it to stop it moving back and forth as you're cutting. So Bosch blades also work but instead of the regular end a couple strokes of the file puts a groove in it and that will stop the blade from rocking back and forth. Sometimes there's options that don't seem obvious until you actually look We've drawn the line on the back. Um, there actually is behind this quarter inch hard board there is some particle board framing one by three that runs across. I don't really want to cut that although it doesn't matter uh, but it would be difficult not to score the wall as well so we'll see if I can remove the quarter inch. Uh, this level is just the right width I'm sitting on the counter or on the bottom of the cupboard. So I will try and score across. See what I can do. We have visitors today. <laughs> you may hear little voices. So what I've done is uh, I used the drywall saw, a very handy tool, especially if you get one that's fairly stiff, not the old style that are quite flexible. And I've cut these slots here. Because of the three-quarter inch particle board at the back, or MDF, uh, I'm not able to cut right through. So I'm using the utility knife, the short blade, and uh, clamp tight. And I'm using that to score in here. And 
push against any pieces I find that are restricting. And then I will cut across further until I get to a point where it will break off. You have to be careful, of course, not to make lines like that from slipping. So there is the piece cut out. Uh, I'll have to try and wiggle this ducting into there. I will vacuum it out before I put everything together. One thing to notice is that the duct does have a forward and a backward position. It leans more one way than the other. So I will make use of that to try and make it fit properly. The flatter edge will be at the back. Okay, I have started uh, cutting this out a little bit higher for the ducting to go through and um, it's a bit awkward uh, it might have been more worthwhile to just take the microwave and the cabinet down but I'm basically by myself for the weight so I'd rather just fight with this I found it helpful to hold this with my left hand and work the saw with my right hand and that makes a better cut and makes it a lot easier so I tried something a little unorthodox because the walls are framed with 2 by 8 studs they're pretty thick you can see the marking on the drill that's the inside mark and that was the outside and because the sheet metal is 29 gauge I decided to try putting this drill bit through the drywall and out to the steel and see if I could get a hole. Well, I did the next best thing, which is I got a dint. So it shows me where it would come through. Just got to find it here. One, two, three. So right in here. I don't know if you could see it or not, but there's a small protrusion there, which shows me where the edge of the ducting is, which means that the pipe would be here which is not where I want it because of this ridge and there's not enough relief in the vent so I either have to build this up to put the vent on there or I have to move it over to the middle and try and finagle with ducting and get it back across to where the center of the microwave is which is about here so one recently discovered failure <coughs> is that uh, this would be the outside edge of the center of the vent and uh, that does not work outside because of the corrugations and the sheet metal. So I have to move over an inch from the outside edge and up and that gives me about the center of the corrugations. So that's going to be tricky. Uh, I also should have noticed that before I cut this. So now I will use the jigsaw because I want to cut everything and I'll cut the hole there. You can see the number of holes keeps growing. I used the jigsaw and I cut out the circle as marked. The five inch piece fits in there. Now I have to remove the insulation. A handy tool for that is an insulation knife. The blade I used for the drywall would also work, but this is, does a better job. So I will use that. It's about a $14 tool. Certainly not going to break the bank. And so I'll cut the insulation to have a hole that's a little bit smaller, so it squeezes against the ducting try and insulate it properly and then I'll drill a metal I'll drill a hole in the metal outside and use a metal blade on the jigsaw to cut that hole and hopefully everything lines up one handy tip for tape measures which helps them to last quite a bit longer is that often people just take it and release it and let it hammer against the outside edge. These are held on with rivets and eventually those pop loose and you end up with a tape measure that gives you 
uh, completely different readings depending on which edge you're working in. Or in some cases I've actually seen them ripped out completely. So what I do is when the tape measure locks, then when I release it, I just put my finger there. And that way the rivets will never wear out. The next bit of bad news is that the strapping runs right where I want to put the hole. So I can either try and cut that out, which is possible, or I can abandon this whole process, put a hole in the top, and use 4 inch pipe in this gap. This 5 inch won't fit. And I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Scratch the old gray cells. So the decision has been made. I'm going to go through the strapping since it's not structural and since I have got the hole roughly in the center between the corrugations of the metal um, and I'm in this deep now, why quit? So I'm going to try and drill a hole through where the center of the pipe is, um, get through with a metal drill on the other side and uh, cut it accordingly. Stay tuned! So presently I have the hole probably half an inch high for the center. I'm going to move it down half an inch. Um, it seems to be centered pretty close to center. We're going through the hole. Depends where I put the camera to fool you. But uh, I think I'm pretty close to center there, just half an inch high. So I'll move that. I'll drill another hole half an inch down and then I'll mark the ducting and cut away. Well, the jigsaw didn't work very well. Combination of metal and wood. So, now I'll try the Dremel. These are handy little cut-off wheels. Special bit. Holds them. Push them on. There we go. Try that. I've gotten way too many metal fragments in my ears. So, or ears. <laughs> Eyeballs. power. I think about cut off wheels. If they get smaller, you cut a smaller circle. Hey, may not be pretty, but cover it with silver duct tape. Nobody will know. Works just great. And the cupboard doors are closed, so nobody will ever know. I have to completely redo the setup because when I went to put the filters in underneath the microwave, I discovered in the package that flapper. And with the other arrangement, it could not open. It would hit the ducting. So I tried uh, cutting the ducting to try and make it fit so it had some clearance for the valve and just didn't work. So here's the new setup. One 3 by 10 to 4 inch adapter with the side exit to flex piping 4 inch straight into the uh, ducting that goes to the vent outside. And now it works. I just have to secure the vent because when I turn on the fan it blows off like this. Sometimes it comes right off. Revision 2. Perhaps it's, it will be successful. This is the finished project secured with three pieces of strapping and power cord wrapped up around the top. And nothing moves. And with the doors closed, it looks perfect. There's the outside vent. 
Uh, we have a prevailing west or northwest wind here, which happens to be this corner of the building. And it was moving the flap off and on, so I taped a nut on there to give it some weight, which acts as a bit of a counterbalance, but you can still see it moving. And I also put these holes on the side, which helped a lot. They were three quarter inch holes drilled with a hole saw. And uh, that just stops a lot of the buffeting. So now it doesn't flap unless we get a good strong wind of about uh, 50 clicks, 30 miles an hour or more.